Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to get SDL installed through a package manager. So this will work on various Linux systems. And if you have other operating systems like Mac and want to install on brew, I think it'll be a similar instruction, but let's go ahead and look at things on Ubuntu and see how to get started here. So what I've got here is my virtual machine here running Ubuntu 25. Now, most of my other videos, I'm on Ubuntu 24 or some variant of Ubuntu. So it doesn't really matter. What does matter is that your package manager, depending on when you're running this and what operating system and how old or new it is, may not have SDL3 available on this actual day of the recording. But depending on when you're watching this, you can try the instructions. In fact, I'll show you how to search to see if SDL3 is available. And if it's not, have no fear. Just check out the playlist and you can always build from source SDL3 and always have the latest and greatest nightly features available. So with that said, though, this is by far the easiest way to get started with SDL, which is, again, a cross-platform development library uh, for building games and multimedia applications. So anyways, what are we going to need here? Well, let me go into my terminal. Um, and again, since this is a fresh install, I'm installing some compilers and build tools like make. Uh, I need my trusty Vim text editor. And then I'm also going to uh, install PKG config, which will allow me to see where my libraries are and so on. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started here. And the first thing I'm going to do here is use app search here. I'm going to look for libsdl three here to see if it's available here. And uh, on my Ubuntu system, which uh, let's see if I do LSB release here. Uh, oh, let's see here. Let me do LSB release. I think dash A gives me all. The, yep, there we go. I am again on version 25. So if you're watching this with some of my previous videos, we're 24.04, the long-term support version. Again, you may not uh, have this available. So anyways, uh, what we do want to see though, um, is those packages. So you might need to do an apt uh, update, for instance, and you might need to run sudo apt update here to make sure that you get the latest repositories. Um, and again, this is basically, you know, in the beta version right now. So we're on the latest and greatest here. But anyways, regardless, let's search again, just so we can see those SDL3 packages. And it looks like uh, somebody has uploaded those in some official capacity here. So we've got docs, we've got the image libraries, um, tests. Let's see if I keep hitting enter the true type fonts. Uh, what else do we got here? And eventually I think we'll have SDL three, um, you know, maybe the networking library and all those and so on. Uh, the one we really want to install though, is the uh, development library here. So let's go ahead and install that here. And again, I'm going to copy this one and we want the dev version. Uh, if you just install this version, that'll give you the libraries, but we want, you know, the header files, we want the source, we want everything uh, that's available here. So let's install the uh, dev version here. So I'll do apt uh, install, I'm going to paste that value in. Uh, you're probably going to need a sudo, but so if you get this error message, that's what it means here. It says, hey, you know, you need to be super user to install this. Uh, oops, let me get rid of that. And go ahead and say, yes, I trust it. Um, and again, you can see uh, what it's upload, uh, downloading here, uh, about 80 megabytes of information needed for all the libraries. And it's going pretty fast here and preparing all of the uh, system files. And this is going to be, again, the easiest way to set things up because you'll have all of the uh, development files, you'll have the header files, you'll have your paths set up correctly. So again, this isn't a great, uh, this isn't a bad option rather, if you just want to get uh, started here. So let's see if it installed here, I'm going to use PKG config, and look at libs and pass an SDL three. And indeed, it has it, it has some path to it. And if you run with C flags, then you can see uh, perhaps where some of these include uh, paths are here. Uh, now that's kind of interesting here. Uh, user SPA. Let's actually take a peek here just so we can kind of investigate what's going on here. Uh, let's do maybe just a quick LS here uh, and go into, I guess, spa here. I don't actually know what's uh, in here. That seems like an interesting path, but uh, let's go ahead and give it a try and see if it installed. Uh, again, you could use D, uh, D package here in my system to kind of list things. Um, and let's search for SDL3. Yeah, it looks like it installed SDL3 dev here, and we've got version 3.2.8, I guess, at this point here. You can see if I make this a little bit bigger uh, and rerun that, if it gives me some more uh, description here. SDL3, 
Yeah, it's just saying it's a simple direct media layer. So, you know, knowing a little bit about your package manager is a good idea here. Uh, but let's go ahead and just run a simple program. Uh, I'm just going to grab one from the SDL uh, examples here. Let's search for something uh, on the index, like maybe create window. I think that's what I was using in the other tutorials here. Uh, let's see if it has a full example. Yeah, let's just do this one. Well, let's grab this. All right, example program. And let's go ahead and open up Vim. Let's see, I don't have Tmux. So I'm going to have to do things. Ah, let's just install it. Tmux. There we go. Um, yeah, this is a real from scratch video here. So anyways, <laughs> uh, let's just do test, uh, or let's just call it sdl1.cpp. Do set paste, paste in all the code. Let's make it larger here. And I want to just split my window here. Okay, so I can see how things are set up here. Pretty basic SDL program that I just grabbed from the uh, repository here. And let's try to build it again, kind of using the same steps that we've always used. Let's just pass in the file and output prog here. Uh, and again, we're going to get a bunch of linker errors here. Uh, we're not getting include errors because it's already on the path here. Let's see if we can echo out our path uh, variable. So somewhere SDL has been installed in some location. Again, our, our package manager is going to pick a pretty reliable uh, location here. So that's why you're not getting any issues with the uh, header files not being found because they must be in one of these path locations. Okay, just so you understand that. Uh, when we build from source, uh, we again see how, how we set that up here. So at a minimum on my Linux system, I think I just need to do um, spend in the library path for SDL 3. Uh, let's see if we can find it. What was it here? Uh, capital SDL. There we go. Okay, let's just try to run it here. Uh, let's see. Did it pop up? Uh, well, we got prog here. Uh, did it work? Let's see. Did it show up behind the browser? Uh, we got to see if it worked or not. Uh, looks like it's not wanting to, to work here. Uh, let's see, maybe if we set up a render here. Ah, this is also an OpenGL window here, so that could be part of the issue here. Uh, we've got a window, but it didn't show up. Okay, so let's kind of debug this here. Yeah, it looks like it's here. Uh, but if it didn't show up, we're probably missing OpenGL. Let's see, GLX info. Um, let's see, apt git install GLX info. Uh, oops, apt install. Let's see if I can find that here. GLX, uh, let's see. Let's see if we can search for this um, in real time. Let's do apt search GLX info. Okay, it's part of the Mesa utils here. Um, let's go ahead and install that and see if that, uh, let's just actually search one more time here. So this is good. I'm glad we ran into this error here. Hopefully move this over here. All right, uh, let's search for Mesa, or is it Lib Mesa? Uh, let's see in our repository. Okay, it's just gonna be Mesa Utils, I think. Mesa, we might get a bunch of stuff here. Uh, Mesa Utils. I just wanna see what version of OpenGL I have here. So apt install, it's gonna to need to be sudo, Mesa Utils. Most of you aren't going to have this problem because you're not going to be running on a virtual machine, but in the instance that you are, or you're running from scratch, or you're running on like Archer or something, um, you might need uh, to do this here. Okay, so GLX info, let's grep uh, for the version string here. Uh, okay, it looks like I have a uh, support for up to 4.5 here. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so let's try to run our window again and see what happened here. Okay, it still doesn't seem to want to be working. Maybe let's grab the example that uh, just sets up the software render just to see if this works here. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, this is gonna do the, we need a surface and all that sort of stuff here. Uh, so it might need to create an image sample.bmp. We're gonna need to create uh, somehow. How will we do this? Who knows? Is that paste? Okay, uh, and then let's see. We need some way to create an image uh here so let's just all right let's just find some sample bmp file here <laughs> this looks trustworthy from an academic uh, website here uh okay let's just save that image and we're going to save this into our home directory where we are installing this program 
let's call it sample.bmp. All right, I believe it is in this directory then. Here's our program, here's sample BMP. Let's go ahead and give this a run here. Let's rebuild it. There we go. Uh, there we go. Compiles, runs, there we go. Okay, so this sample is working here. Uh, let's see, so why wasn't that other previous sample working? Um, let's see if I undo what was going on. Oh, well, I guess it's, the window is not really doing anything interesting here. We might need to present a frame. It might have actually needed to swap the frame buffer, um, which is, let's see, are we doing that in this previous example? Yeah, we're at least updating the renderer. Uh, I wonder if I presented the renderer, if it would have showed up or something. But anyways, I mean, it's working now, so you don't have to really worry about it. Uh, you know, we just needed to find and create an image from somewhere. And we have our hello SDL three example working and installed from your package manager. So some other interesting things you can do, you know, use your tools here. Um, if you run LDD on it, uh, you can see some of the paths. Let's see if we can actually find SDL three here. Uh, here, let's just grab for SDL three. Um, let's see SDL. Uh, I oh, guess we can't, uh, or at least I can't right now. Let's scroll up here. Uh, oh, there it is, all in caps. Okay, there you go. Um, lib x86, Linux, GNU. Okay, so you have this path here. Um, let's see if we can find the header files, just so you know where they are here. Um, and I think we could try to just use GCC on this, or G++-H uh, on our SDL1 program here. That's gonna give us the full path of everything. Okay, yeah, and it's not gonna be able to compile it here, but uh, let's see here. User include is where our package manager installed this. Okay, so, you know, if you have no idea, but uh, so, so to speak, if you're, you know, if you at least your package manager worked and you can see things, uh, <laughs> meaning like you get some undefined reference, um, then you can at least find your header files or whatever. Um, and maybe, Again, if you need to point to this path because you're using like VS Code or something and you're getting a bunch of false positives saying, hey, I can't find this header file, right? That could be a little trick uh, to find these files. So user include SDL3. That's a pretty reasonable uh, place to install these things. User include SDL3. Uh, I don't know. Let's just open up the .h file here uh, and you can see some of the, well, all the stuff here. And that .h file basically just includes most all the stuff that you need and those have their own includes and so on. So anyways, folks, I hope that was helpful. You know, we've been able to now build and install uh, and get a little hello world program with SDL three. Uh, again, the example that I was running was from the documentation here, this SDL create window and render. Uh, I tried this other one here. Hopefully that little debugging session was useful though. Uh, create window. Um, I guess we weren't doing anything with it. Um, and well, the other issue here, I should actually read this here. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, the thing is, if you create an SDL uh, OpenGL window here, you do need to set up a SDL like context and all that kind of stuff for the OpenGL stuff, which you can check out in my OpenGL series for some guidance on that. Okay, so that's why that one wasn't appearing, but it was compiling and running, so no problem there. Okay, and now before we go though, before I wrap this all up, I just wanna show you one more thing here. Uh, again, just a little bit more about compilation. So we compiled with this command and it works just fine here, but depending on how you're building, I really like using tools like PKG uh, config, for instance, which will basically look for known locations and try to find uh, basically a PC file, which is for a package configuration. Uh, PC for package configuration for the SDL3, which again is usually set up by your package manager. So again, we can do the PKG config uh, dash libraries, C flags, and then SDL3. Um, and if I put that within the back ticks, um, oh, let's see if it's, I think it's lowercase SDL3. There we go. So just try one or the other variant, depending on how your package manager sets it up here. Uh, but again, that'll give you the linker flags for your C uh, or C++ project here that you need uh, and potentially other uh, build systems, or if you're doing other programming languages, you might need to do this. But the nice thing that you can do here, and let's do it on one line, is to put this within backticks. And then if I pass in my G++, my file, uh, dash O prog here, this will set up all the linker flags and C flags that you need and build it just as well here. Okay, let's actually remove the program file just so you can see that it's not there. Rebuild it. 
see that it's there, prog, uh, and then we'll run it here. I think this is probably the most consistent way um, to do things rather than rely on whatever path happens to be brought up. Um, so again, um, because you might actually have or end up with different versions of SDL3, you know, for whatever reason, because you might have some that are like, I don't know, filled with more debug information versus the one that you actually want for release or whatever. So anyways, um, it, it's just good to know that you can do this for the standard package manager standard anyway that you sort of build uh, SDL3. And then if you need to, you could pass in the paths. Um, but uh, the other thing to know about this is if you're building on Windows, Linux, or Mac, like I'm doing and showing you on these videos, uh, this is going to be the standard way that I build on basically all these tutorials uh, regardless. So, you know, there's just one sort of command to know. So anyways, that was the last little thing that I wanted to show you. And we'll go ahead and wrap up with some resources and more here. All right, folks. So anyways, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you want these lessons and more, check out uh, courses.mshot.io. Let's scroll down. There is a SDL3 section now where you can find all these lessons uh, that you're finding on YouTube here as well in a distraction-free environment. So feel free to enjoy that. And you can discuss stuff too. Um, if you want to like paste code and stuff on the forum.mshadow.io. Uh, there is a specific SDL3 section, but you can uh, venture over to the other sections as well. So anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully that was helpful. And you know, it's a little peek into the future, or maybe by the time you watch this video, it'll be old and your package manager will have lib SDL3 dash dev um, available on whatever tool that you're using. All right. So here it is in Linux. Go ahead and enjoy. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.